Okay, we had the new parts come through from the factory. We'll get them on the car ahead of FP1. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to episode 7 of my F1 2018 Williams Road to Glory career mode. Where today we're here for the Canadian Grand Prix. One of my favourite tracks on the Formula 1 calendar. I'm really, really looking forward to this Grand Prix. Our new target by the team is qualified 13th or better in one of the races for an extra 500 R&D points. Which is pretty much a full upgrade there. And as you can see, three upgrades on the car as we move into this Grand Prix. One for the engine combustion, we've got the oil combustion upgrade there. One for the rear downforce with the side pod turning vents. And then one rate reduction there as well. So really, really good. You know, we're really piling the upgrades on this car at the moment. And as you can see, coming into this weekend, the game thinks we have actually jumped Toro Rosso now as well. So we're currently the eighth best car on the grid. I have upped the AI as well for this one. If you did miss out on the Monaco Grand Prix last time, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking it out. It was quite a rate, crazy race on the hold, and currently, as well, we are, uh, at the moment of saying this, I am 80 subscribers away from 7,500, which was actually my aim by the end of 2018. There. So if you're not already subscribed and you want to see more of this Williams crew, I would highly, highly recommend doing so. Going through through practice, though, picking up a couple of good R&D bonuses there. We've got the purple score on the track monetization as well as the qualifying pace. Didn't run too many laps here around Canada, you know, the engine was getting quite worn as well so you know we really do want to save that for the race we don't want to take too many penalties too early on in these races so you know we'll try and keep the engine in quite good shape on the whole there pick up i think there was just over 200 rmd points on the whole it might have actually been near enough 300 yes it was 302 takes us all the way up now to 1278 after we saved a few from last weekend to upgrade the i think it's i can't remember what it's called now the 1000 rmd upgrade on the chassis, you know, we're really still focusing on this chassis. The chassis factory efficiency, which will improve efficiency, meaning 10% less resource points to create, uh, required, sorry, to create a new part. So we'll go with that. That should hopefully save us some money in the long run there. As long as we say, as long as we spend, what, 10,000 RD points on that, it should hopefully help out. But let's move on then into qualifying. Welcome again then, and we hope you're ready for another fantastic session as the teams prepare to unleash their cars for qualifying at the Canadian Grand Prix. When it comes to getting lap time out of this circuit, it's traditionally been about maximizing top speed. Do you simply remove as much downforce as possible, hang on into the corners and max out down the straights? Top speed is a key factor for this circuit. Even if you can achieve the same lap time as someone running less wing than you, chances are you'll find overtaking difficult if you have too much drag. Right, it's not going to be easy getting into the next qualifying session, but we know you'll give it your all. So there we are then. The team's still sceptical that we'll be able to make it through in 2Q2 there. Uh, sorry, it's, yeah, it's Q2. And as we come through to start our first flying lap there, well, this is just an absolute mess at the moment. This Williams car, inconsistency seems to be its consistency at these stages of the season. One weekend I'll go in, it'll handle like a dream. The next weekend, as you can see here, it just won't go where I wanted to there. And that didn't give me too much time towards the end of the session there. We did go out for another run earlier on. And you can see at the moment we're only down in P16 here. But we have found another couple of tenths on this lap so far as we break now down in towards the wall of champion chicane. They take a lot of kind of kick the back end though. And we're going to drop a huge amount of that time up towards the line. Are we going to find any improvement? No, we don't. We've actually set the identical lap time that we'd already done there in the session, which was quite surprising, but very, very unfortunate there because that does mean that, yeah, unfortunately, we are out in Q1 here at the Canadian Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly, myself, Charles Leclerc, Marx Ericsson, and Brendan Harley all drop out in Q1. They're really, really gutted with that result, especially with how much I like this Canadian Grand Prix circuit on the whole. They're really, really disappointed with that. Lance Stroll, though, does make it through, obviously, his home Grand Prix this weekend, obviously hoping he can get off to quite a good race as well. The only driver left in this season as well to not score points. So, obviously, Lance will really, really want to try and shake off that as well. You know, as we move throughout the entirety of the season, I would be quite surprised if he didn't score a single point throughout, but it's certainly not impossible, you know, depending on the rule changes that come into Formula 1. We could potentially see, you know, really sort of back out a development on this year's car, really focus on next year because, well, it's all a game of strategy with F1 2018, but we'll have to wait and see. In terms of the rivalry, though, as you can see, Lance now, obviously, after we beat him last time out, he is now leading us 
as we move in to this Grand Prix weekend. Obviously, it's a little bit of a rough start to the race weekend. In terms of R&D points, though, we are going to take around about 100 points then. 99 at the end of that session takes us back up to nearly 400 Obviously, overall. I expected a better session, but these things happen from time to time. And Try now, to make up for it in the oh, race. Sorry, Emma's Winning still talking. Winning rivalries is a great way to earn respect from your team today. around the planet. But yeah, to, in terms of this Grand Prix weekend, though, we are actually finally going to select a new rival, first rival is as a well. You know, we you really choose, sort of, there have been quite a lot of comments about making sure, you know, we do pick a second rival as well. So I'm really obviously going to try and do that over the course of this race weekend. And not too sure who I'm going to pick just yet. You know, I'm not going to take too many risks. Obviously, K-Mag there. The one last weekend, obviously, I don't think we'll be trying to challenge him. So we're probably going to go with either the Sauber or the Toro Rosso there of Pierre Gasly. I think we are going to roll with Pierre Gasly there. You know, 16 respect points as well. You know, quite a few. We're able to beat him and Lance. You know, I certainly take 41 respect points after a good solid couple of weekends there. But there we are then. Pierre Gasly will be my second rival in this F1 2018 career mode. But let's move on then into the Canadian Grand Prix. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. We'll be seeing top speeds of around 210 miles an hour here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve with around two thirds of the lap taken at full throttle. High-speed chicanes spell potential danger, especially at the infamous Wall of Champions. And watch out for overtaking into the hairpin and the final chicane. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Now, I want to ask you about Kevin Magnussen. As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed, they'll be starting out of position today due to a power unit component change. So it's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. Everyone has to deal with penalties or reliability issues from time to time throughout their career. You just have to suck up the pain and get on with the job at hand. Today isn't about performing a miracle to put the car back where it should be. It's about effective damage limitation. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Ocon, Hülkenberg, Sainz, Alonso, and Sergio Perez. Bottas, they've taken a grid penalty. Van Dorn, Roman Grosjean, and Stroll. Gasly, the Professor, Kevin Magnussen, and Charles Leclerc, Ericsson, and Brendan Hartley rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. open on the run to turn one and keep it clean we want to come out in one piece good luck so yeah the team once again they're stressing the importance of keeping it clean on the opening lap of grand prix you know it is it is quite critical on the whole to you know remain with your front wing intact we've only actually lost our front wing once so far this season and that was all the way back at australia but here we are then on the grid ready for the canadian grand prix it is five lights here at circuit gilles Villeneuve, and it's lights out and away we go, they're getting off to a fairly mediocre start, they're not able to capitalise, but not losing it too much either as we break in towards some and everyone gets very, very tightly congested. Lance trying to look right around the outside there, Gasly has gone off to try quite a good start, trying to swing it right around the outside of a couple of cars there, and it looks like that's been a phenomenal move by my new rival there, side by side with my other rival as Grosjean, well he's parked the bus going through turn two there. I'm really, really annoyed with that one. Unfortunately, we do dink the front wing. They're going to send it down his inside through the next corner as well. We don't want to be sat behind the brake checking baguette there, unfortunately. Yeah, that will mean we do have a little bit of front wing damage there. So I spoke about just before the race how we'd already got front wing damage once, but now, unfortunately, it looks like that's going to be our second time in a Grand Prix there. So really, really unfortunate with that. We dink the wall on the exit of the second chicane there. So really, really sort of struggling at the moment for pace here as we come now down in towards the hairpin there, locking up the front brakes there was a start as we try not to run into the back of that loud straw there as we come out of the hairpin though using the hot lap once again I have read all your comments now I will say from Paul Ricard onwards I do use overtake mode when I'm trying to overtake I honestly thought hot lap mode was better but there will sort of be a side video on that dropping as soon but in towards the final chicane there Lance is really parking the bus 
as we come through that corner. We're going to try to look to his outside. It will move to the inside for turn one here. Are we going to be able to keep it up the inside of my teammate there? Lock up the inside wheel, run a little bit deep in to the corner there. Lance is going to try and hold it right around the outside through turn two, but we do make that move work now and up into P14 of this Grand Prix there. So a fairly decent start up two places there, but still, you know, with this front wing damage, it's going to be very, very tough through this Grand Prix, you know, even just to make it to the first round of pit stops here as we come through the second chicane here, lighting up the rear wheels ever so slightly there over that curb on the outside here. But so far, you know, as I said, this race going all right. The Hamilton sets fast as that of the Grand Prix. You can just see as well on the mini map. I've expanded it up to the full track map for this race. I'm going to a few of you guys were asking for that. But Seb and Lewis running away with it at the start of this Grand Prix. Going through the first couple of corners though on lap three. You can see all now over the back of Pierre Gasly, my new championship rival here, kicking out the back end ever so slightly as we come through this first chicane now to just Circuit Giovanna. This is such a fantastic track. It's all about precision, the high speed there. I'm running a little bit wide. Actually going through the next corner here and now out onto the back straight there. Unfortunately, we light the wheels up over the curb, but that's us in the wall. Unfortunately, that is us out of the Canadian Grand Prix. And that just happened all so, so fast. Let's have a look back on the replay camera. You can see we just run wide going into that corner there. And unfortunately, going through there, lose a bit of turning from the grass on the wheels there. And unfortunately, just get the car over that curb on the exit there. You know, the curbs on this game so, so lethal on the whole. I actually take Lance Stroll with me as well there. So certainly really, really gutted with that one from myself. You know, a fatal, fatal error here. But that has been a huge crash between quite a few of the guys behind me as well. You can see, I think that's both Haas cars actually piling into that incident as well. There, I think Lance Stroll has somehow survived that. But let's just go on board then with myself as we come through here. You can see, just run a little bit wide there. Click the car over that curb and just try to correct it, get a huge, huge tank slapper as we come up this long back straight there. Lance actually rotates the car even further into that Armco barrier there, which I think really did the fatal damage there. Unfortunately for Roman Grosjean, nowhere to go in that incident. K-Mag trying to avoid it as well, but just clips Lance Stroll's rear wheel there. And I have no idea how Lance has survived that. The Sauber, I think that's of Ericsson, pile drives in there as well. And that's going to leave, I think Lance Stroll actually gets airborne after that one there. I think that's Charles Leclerc as well. Just about able to avoid that crash. But having a look then on the photo mode there. we got one hat out running down the barriers on the outside. Well, Ericsson there lifting up Lance Stroll. Myself at the Grand Prix. Weirdly though with no tyre loss there. We've got, yeah, as I said, Lance Stroll over a foot over the air there. Completely pitched into the air. No idea how he's been able to survive that one there. Roman Grosjean as well in the background out of this Grand Prix as well there. So that's been a huge five car pile up here in the Canadian Grand Prix and I will hold my hands up and say that was entirely entirely my fault and well you guys know from this crew mode I'm not about just sort of rage quitting these races. I do. If I crash I crash you know if I'm not going to rewind or anything like that. So that was really really heartbreaking there. I, I was going to make today a double upload on career mode but obviously after that retirement there and especially so, so early on into the Grand Prix. I will be making today once again then a triple, so we will have Paul Ricard and Austria going out later on today. They're obviously Paul Ricard, the newest circuit on F1 2018 as well, so make sure you are subscribed for that. But yes, Sebastian Vettel was able to win the Grand Prix. They're a very, very good race by him and the Ferrari team. That means he still continues to have a worse performance so far of second place this season. What a dominant drive by him there. no good having a well-oiled machine behind the scenes without a talented hand on the wheel, of course. So, here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. It's a good result for Sebastian Vettel, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? I'm going to say Brendan Hartley. 
It was probably one of his best drives this season, and I was thoroughly impressed. On to the constructors then. Ferrari extend their lead at the top of a championship. Meanwhile, good work from Force India this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After all this drama, you'd be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. So as you can see there, somehow it was only actually myself and the two Haas cars that went out of that Grand Prix. I was pretty certain I saw Sauber without a wheel that either. So pretty impressive that Marcus Ericsson was only able to finish a lap down after all of that there. But that is not a result screen I want to focus on all too much. You can see not many changes overall. Sergio Perez jumps Van Dorn and then Sainz also jumps Roman Grosjean after that retirement. And we still hold on to P11 overall there. But as I said, really, really gutted with that result, you know. I, I'm not going to rewind, you know, if I crash, I crash at the end of the day, so that's obviously frustrating, but, you know, to keep a sake of realism to it as well, I'm not going to do all of that. Force India jump Renault as well in the constructor standings, so Renault have gone from 4th to 6th over the last two Grand Prix, and we sort of find ourselves in no man land. 19 points behind the car ahead, 16 ahead of the car behind, but yeah, that was the Canadian Grand Prix. Very, very frustrating on the whole. As you well, can see, we're just going to sort of talk over this really interview, leave that going on in the happens. background there. But as I said, you know, Paul Ricard will be you uploaded in just a couple of hours. You and, you know, obviously, I, I wouldn't imagine many of you have sort of enjoyed that video for itself. But, you know, if you will still subscribe, obviously, for more of the F1 2018 the career, like it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Let me know down in the comments as well, obviously, if you want me to try and use rewinds. You know, if I do make crashes like that, you know, personally, it's not something I want to do. But obviously, if it's something... That you guys, are, well, you know, want me to do, you know, you want me to complete nice every anyway. race, then just let me know. But for the sake of realism, I do want to keep the mistakes in there. But as I said, hopefully you guys still inscribe, subscribe for the next Grand Prix. Make sure, obviously, well, if you do want to, it really does help me out if you do like the video as well. But I will see you guys next time in Paul Ricard for the French Grand Prix.